In this video, we're going to take a look at how to solve linear inequalities. And the way we're going to explain this or set this up is to actually back up for just a minute and talk about equations, and then that'll help us better understand inequalities. So let, let's say we had a, a, some linear equation like uh, y equals 2x plus 1, which is uh, an equation in two variables because there's x's and y's. Well, we know what it means to be a solution of an equation. It's an ordered pair, x, y, that we've talked about a lot that makes the equation true. So for example, um, 0, 1 is a solution, uh, 1, 3 is a solution, 2, 5, because all of these x, y values, when you plug them in the equation, will, will make the equation true. And we know something even a little beyond that, we know that since there's so many solutions, the way we typically express these solutions is on a graph. And so if you did a, a, a small little graph here, y equals 2x plus 1, you know, you would get a line something kind of like this or so, uh, whereabouts where all of these points would be different points on the line and that they would line up. So there's even more solutions that we haven't found, but all the ones even that we haven't found will simply be other ordered pairs uh, along this line here. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's move on to inequalities, and you'll notice this is a little different. Okay, so let's say we had a similar inequality like this equation. Maybe y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. So it's the same terms, I've just replaced the equation, the equal sign, with an inequality symbol. So, so let's, let's see if we can think about what some solutions would be for this guy. Um, because this is early and we don't really have a set way of, of finding these solutions, let's just do a, a little bit of guess and check for a minute. And I think this will help us understand inequalities a little bit better. Um, let me just jot down a few ordered pairs. All right, so here's my question. Is the point 2, 3 a solution? Let's try it. When we plug in 2 for x and 3 for y, does it make the inequality true? Uh, let's, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, that's 2 times x, that's 4. 4 and 1 make 5, and 3 is less than 5. So yes, this would be a solution. How about 1, negative 1? 1 times 2 is 2, 2 and 1 make 3, negative 1 is less than 3. So that'll work, uh, very good. Uh, how about this one, 5 comma 0, let's see, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 and 1 make 11, 0 is less than 11, that's a solution. All right, and last one, bear with me, negative 1 comma 4, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 makes negative 1, 4, that's not less than negative 1, something's wrong with this last one, so I need to mark it out. So as with equations, you have some ordered pairs that will make the inequality true and others don't. But here, here's what I want to point out. Uh, take a look at what happens if we try to plot or graph where these ordered pairs are. Um, we'll just give a, a rough sketch as, as to where they would be. So 2 comma 3, that's 1, 2 comma 1, 2, 3. Then we have 1 comma negative 1, that's right here. And then we have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 comma 0. So these are all good. And then negative 1 comma 4, which is right about here, that's bad. Now, okay, now, now we're just thoroughly confused because these green points, these good points, they don't line up in a straight line like they did for linear equations. And the, reason, and the reason that is, is because we now have an inequality. 2x plus 1 just, just simply has to be greater than y, and that, that's all, greater than or equal to y. And so what's going on here? How do I easily tell where all of my solutions are? Well, if you notice one thing, it seems like the good points stayed together, the solutions, and then if we found a few other bad points, you can just take my word for it, the bad points would be over here. So how do we know where the line in the sand is that separates the good points, like the green dots I'm putting, and the bad points uh, that are right here? Well, 
it turns out that the guy who's going to separate the good points from the bad points is this line as if it were an equation rather than an inequality. If I take this blue line right here, y equals 2x plus 1, and I translate it over to my graph and look something kind of like this, you'll notice that the good points wind up on one side and the bad points wind up on the other. And when I say good and bad, I, what I mean are, are the solutions versus the points that are not solutions. And so these would be all the solutions to the linear inequality. So how, how do we collect that in some formal steps? Well, here, here we go. Here's some formal steps that you can write down for how to solve a linear inequality. So the first thing you do is you're going to replace that inequality symbol, whatever it may be, with an equal sign just temporarily, not always, but you can even do it mentally. You can just think about it, but graph that equation first. Now, why? Well, that's going to turn out to be your line in the sand that separates good points from bad points. And then you're going to graph that equation. Now, one little side comment that I'll make before we go to step two. Uh, some inequalities are like this that have a less than or equal to, and sometimes it'll just be a strictly less than. And the same thing is true for greater than. Some will have the or equals to and some won't. If you have a strict inequality, you need to put a dotted line, right? Like dot, 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 dot. Uh, if you have an or equals to, it needs to be a solid line because if it has the or equals to, you're allowed to be on the line. But if it's a strict inequality, you can get right up to the line, but not touch the line. So just be aware of that. Now, once you have your line in the sand drawn, how do we tell now without these red and green dots, which is the good side and which is the bad side? Well, it turns out we only need one, what we call test point because once you've sampled one point and you know if that point's on the good side or the bad side, you immediately know if that entire side is good or bad, and you know about the other side as well, whether they are solutions or not solutions. So pick a test point and plug into the inequality, and then based off of what that test point says, shade the appropriate side. All right, now, right, just before we do an example, I wanna make two other quick comments. Um, mostly about the test point. The only criteria that we have about the test point is that it can't be on the line. Uh, th think about a fence that separates two halves of a pasture. Well, if you're on the fence, then you're not clearly on one side or another, so you won't really know if you, what side to shade because you're not on a side. So pick a, a test point that's clearly to the left or the right or the high side or the low side of your line in the sand. Just don't pick your test point on the line. And second remark, if you can, as long as your line doesn't go through the origin, I highly recommend using 0, 0 as your test point because it's so fast and easy and it's consistent. And when you plug zeros in for X and Y, a lot of things just go away. And so that'll make the math a lot easier as well. So uh, just remember those, those two things. All right, so let's, let's try an example here. Let's try to find all the solutions to y is strictly greater than negative x plus three. All right, so the first thing we'll do, um, you can either just think about this or you can actually write it down. We're gonna graph y equals negative x plus three. All right, we're gonna keep the inequality, but we're gonna consider it as an equation just temporarily. So this has a y-intercept of one, two, three. And then from here, it's got a slope of negative one, which means it goes down one over one, down one over one. So you kind of get this 45 degree line that should be dotted to indicate that this is a strict inequality. And now I just need to know which is the good side and which is the bad side, which side has the solutions and which one doesn't. Um, let's pick our test point of zero, zero, as we'll typically try to do. So test point, we're gonna try plugging in zero, zero. And I, I do have to double check, zero, zero clearly is not on my line. Okay, so I'm good to go. So here I'm asking a question. Is zero strictly greater than negative zero plus three? Zero strictly greater than negative zero plus three. 
So is zero strictly greater than three? No, it's not. Zero is not strictly greater than three, which means this is the bad side, or the side that doesn't have the solutions, and this is the good side, right? The, the side that does have the solutions, because zero, zero did not make the inequality true. Now on your homework or your test, don't don't write good and bad. That's that's not formal mathematically. Um, but what we will do is since we know that this is the good side that has the solutions, we will shade this side because this is where all the solutions are. And what I'm trying to do is represent the fact that anybody over here, any of these points here, and you can try them if you want to, will make the inequality be true. And I'm not even, I'm not going to put X's or write bad or do anything to the other side because there are no solutions on the opposite side. So anyways, this is how we solve a linear inequality. We graph the equation, solid line or dotted line, and we pick a test point and use that test point to shade an appropriate side.